Hey, what's up everybody? This is CJ here back again with another video. And today we're going to be talking about what possibly could be the next generation of artificial intelligence and how we soon may be able to automate writing. But before we get into the video, this video is brought to you by us, the Techonomics, the number one newsletter to get all of your tech and business news straight to your email today. So head to the description box below and sign up right now. All right. So getting back into the video, Quick question, do you know how hard it is for you to write a sentence? Like even writing this now, the script, and you writing your comment, we're, we're doing something pretty incredible. I mean, somehow over our lives, we have learned to put random words together to actually give them more meaning. Like honestly, there's nothing really special about the word taco, but once we say, I want to eat a taco, we know that taco has to be something about food, something you can eat. Well, we are getting to the point where we are able to get a computer to accurately fake it till it makes it. Now, a, a computer doesn't intuitively know what a taco is. All it knows is ones and zeros, addition, multiplication, all that stuff. But it's getting really good at faking it. And honestly, all it needs to do is be able to fool us to be considered great. Well, recently a company called OpenAI just released its third iteration of its AI language model that's pretty damn good. In what seems like a common occurrence for most of the popular tech innovations in the world, OpenAI was a brainchild of Elon Musk and Sam Altman from Y Combinator and other investors who allowed them to pledge over a billion dollars into this project. But let's kind of summarize what GPT actually does. This is the thing that OpenAI has been working on and just released. GPT stands for Generative Pre-Trained Transformer. So when you take a look at your phone and start typing, do you notice how your keyboard is able to predict the next word that you may want to type? Well, that is pretty much what this is doing here, but on a much, much larger scale. I mean, with GPT-2, OpenAI was able to use machine learning to crunch 40 gigabytes of text from the internet which produced 1.5 billion parameters that were able to predict text. And GPT-2 was pretty good for its time. So good actually that OpenAI delayed its launch because it was worried that people may use it to create fake news. <laughs> Think about that. It was so good that they were worried about getting this technology out to people. Well, now GPT-3 is out and boy, this one is bigger and better. With GPT-3, OpenAI was able to use machine learning to crunch 300 gigabytes of text from the internet, which produced 175 billion parameters. 175 billion. Damn. Well, think about that. That is two orders of magnitude larger than GPT-2. So, so what is GPT-3 capable of actually doing? Well, instinctively, it's more of the same. It's a text predictor but it's better. Not perfect, but better. Aram Sabeti was able to get access to GPT-3 early, and let's look at an example he was able to make. So the way that these work, the predictors, you have to first give the program some text, and it's going to predict the rest of it for you. So this is the text that Saram was able to provide to the program. Kanye West exclusive, why he's running for the presidency, and what his priorities would be as president. Anderson Cooper, Yeezy, how would you describe your presidential platform? Now this is the part where the computer is actually going to predict what he's going to say next. So everything after this is all generated by the computer. Kanye, my platform is very simple. I want to make everything awesome again. Anderson Cooper, but what about foreign policy? Who cares about that stuff? Let's talk about the important stuff like Kim Kardashian's butt. That's a bit sexist. I'm sorry, I'm not sexist. I love women. I'm just an equal opportunity objectifier. But what about abortion? I think abortion is fine. I mean, women should have the right to choose what they want to do with their bodies. But what about climate change? Let's talk about Kim Kardashian's butt. I'm gonna be straight with you, Kanye. Oh no, you're gonna be gay with me? No, I'm going to be straight with you. You're not gonna win this election. I'm going to win. No, you're not. Yes, I am. No, you're not. Yes, I am. No, you're not. Yes, I am. <laughs> All right, so, so now that was perfect. 
GPT-3 is still currently in beta, but as soon as I'm given access, I'm going to definitely play with it a little more. There was also some other funny examples that Saran was able to make with his program, such as a rap song by Lil Wayne about the boy wizard Harry Potter, a pop song by Taylor Swift about the boy wizard Harry Potter, and also a user manual for the A1247 flux capacitor from the movie Back to the Future. So I'm going to leave a link in the description for you to check it out and come back here and leave a comment so we can see what you think about it. And like always, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and of course, do me a favor, sign up for the Techonomics below. We give out free gifts and you never really know what we're going to send in the email every day.